some of the parallels between Freemasonry and witchcraft show such a similarity that it cannot possibly be coincidental. Similarities in ritual, wording, and symbolism are so close in several instances that it clearly suggests a common origin. To examine this possibility, I spoke with a number of former Masons and compared their Blue Lodge initiations with the experiences of former occultists. In the initiation in Freemasonry, we had to be recommended by another Mason. Well, in order to join witchcraft, you have to be first screened. You have to be recommended by somebody currently in witchcraft. Well, when I was initiated, I was blindfolded and bound by a rope. And on your bare chest was thrust the point of a spear. In witchcraft, we were initiated through a, uh, a very involved ritual, uh, initiation ceremony, uh, wherein the uh, candidate was led uh, blindfolded, uh, bound by a rope uh, to the edge of uh, the uh, magic circle. And the rope is around your neck and your lid forward. And up front, in the eastern end of the building, is a person who's a worshipful master. And you kneel down before him as if he were a god. You were met uh, by the uh, high priest or high priestess uh, at that time, usually with a sword uh, to your chest. When I went to enter the lodge, a sharp object was put to my left breast. And I was warned that should I reveal any of the secrets of Freemasonry uh, to know what to expect. When you're presented before the high priest, a sword is held against your chest, and you actually take a blood oath, promising to remain faithful to the secrets of witchcraft. Well, when you are in the room, this um, blindfold is taken away from you, and this is a time when they say that you're coming from darkness into light. During the initiation ceremony, the, the initiate is led by the lieutenant of the uh, high priest and is challenged at the edge of the circle by someone saying, who goes there? And the answer is, one from the world of darkness. In masonry, the prayers are ended with, so mote it be. Oh, and one of the other aspects of, uh, or distinctives of the craft was that we would always end any spell or ritual where we released the power, this is where the power was released, with the word, so mote it be. I was intrigued to discover that witchcraft and Freemasonry had so much in common. However, in white witchcraft, followers dismiss the biblical concept of Lucifer. Freemasonry goes so far as to actually call Lucifer God. In the words of sovereign pontiff of universal Freemasonry, Albert Pike, yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately, Adonai, the Hebrew God of the Bible, is also God. And the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai, but Lucifer, God of light and God of good, is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the God of darkness and evil. Listen to the words of 33rd degree Mason Manley P. Hall. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. Of the literally millions of Masons worldwide, how many of them are actually aware of the true meaning of the Masonic symbols? The answer is very few. Since most Masons never go past the third degree of the Blue Lodge, the, the rank of Master Mason, the vast majority of them never discover what they're involved in. And they never will discover what Freemasonry is all about unless they venture into the higher levels of the Scottish Rite or the York Rite. In fact, they're not just ignorant, they're deliberately misled by their superiors in the Lodge. In the words of Masonry's own authority, Albert Pike, the blue degrees are but the outer court or portico of the temple. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine that he understands them. And many Masons go through the first three degrees, become a master Mason, and they just quit there thinking that this is just a nice fraternal organization. And they do not realize that their own leaders 
have consciously lied and deceived to them because they do not want them to know the true teachings of masonry. I went in there um, with all good intentions, um, thinking I was uh, entering to, you know, into a, uh, a fraternity uh, that, that was really interested in, in helping people. But uh, now I, I realize that in the lower echelons, in the lower degrees, uh, you don't realize what, what's happening. Well, the meaning of the lodge and um, what it was about to me was a group of people who were out to help other people. And there were different things that you could see in the lodge. The people were close together. They were bound by something. And I thought it was a Christian organization. What made uh, one think that the uh, lodge was uh, a Christian place was the fact that I found people who were uh, members of the same church uh, to uh, which I belong, the Presbyterian Church in Canada, were members of the lodge. Uh, members in prominent positions in the lodge. And the fact that these members uh, in their rituals used uh, quotations from scripture uh, sort of doubly made one think that it was okay. They think that they are actually being initiated into a Christian organization. And it's because the three degrees in, in the Blue Lodge are veiled in a, in a veneer of Christianity. Jesus Christ is central to the Christian faith. In fact, without him there is no Christianity. That is because Christ claimed to be God incarnate, and as such, Christ cannot be separated from his teachings. He did not teach a system of morality to lead one to God. Instead, he claimed to be the way to the Father. But what is the official Masonic teaching about Jesus Christ? Listen again to Supreme Pontiff of Scottish Rite Freemasonry, Albert Pike. It, masonry, reverences all the great reformers. It sees in Moses, the lawgiver of the Jews, in Confucius and Zoroaster, in Jesus of Nazareth, and in the Arabian iconoclast, great teachers of morality and eminent reformers, if no more. In other words, Jesus Christ is reduced to being a great reformer, no different than Confucius or Zoroaster. But the Bible says plainly in Acts chapter 4, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The very essence of Christianity is man's inability to save himself. For this cause, God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross and make atonement for us. How different this is from the teaching of Manley Hall in his book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. The true Mason is not creed bound. He realizes with the divine illumination of his lodge that as a Mason, his religion must be universal. Christ, Buddha, or Mohammed, the name means little, for he recognizes only the light and not the light bearer. He worships at every shrine, bows before every altar, whether in temple, mosque, pagoda, cathedral, and realizes with his true understanding the oneness of all spiritual truths. No true Mason can be narrow, for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness. No true mason can be narrow, for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness. An interesting statement, since in the Bible, Jesus Christ says, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. When masons say that Jesus Christ is simply another great moral teacher, another great moral prophet, uh, equal with Buddha. In fact, Masons teach, according to Albert Pike, that Buddha was the first great Masonic teacher. So they're equating Jesus with Buddha, with Muhammad, with the religious leaders as just another religious leader. He is not God. He is not the incarnate Savior who came to save men from their sins because Masons do not need a Savior. Masons feel they can save themselves through moral good deeds. In the lodge that I belonged to, we had a Muslim apply for membership. And the membership of our lodge didn't know how to initiate him because we knew we couldn't initiate him on the Holy Bible. So uh, we wrote a letter to the Grand Lodge of Alberta asking him for instruction. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, a letter came back stating that we should place the Koran and the square and compass 
beside the Bible and the square and compass on the altar and initiate him with full honors. Bible-believing Christians accept the fact that God exists in a trinity of three persons, that is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what most people, including many Masons, don't realize is that the God of Freemasons, the great architect of the universe, is also a trinity. In both the Scottish and York Rite, you discover that Masons are on a journey seeking to find the lost name of God. Part of their religion, they say, is that uh, the sacred name of God has been lost. And they tell this whole story of the building of Solomon's temple and the architect, Hiram Abiff, uh, who in building the temple lost the sacred name of God. And so they say that Masons are on this search to recover the, the lost name of God. And finally, when you get to the Royal Arch degree, the Mason is finally told what the secret name of God is that only Masons can know. And they pride themselves that they alone are the custodians of the secret name of God. And that name can only be whispered among Masons by three Masons, each saying a syllable. The name is Jobulon. It is a combination of three words, Jehovah, Baal, and Osiris, the Egyptian sun god. Yah, Bel, On. Yah, Bel, On. Yah, And what a Bell. Mason is worshiping in the Masonic Lodge is a three-headed god made up of Jehovah, Baal, which was the fertility god of Baalbek in Lebanon, and Osiris, the Egyptian sun god, represented by the phallic symbol, uh, uh, the sexual uh, worship in Egypt. And they have combined this into a three-headed monster and say that is the Masonic God they worship. Salvation to the Christian is based entirely upon the vicarious sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. The Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It teaches that no matter how hard we work to be good, we can never attain to the standards of the sinless Almighty. But God gives the free gift of eternal life to those who believe in Jesus Christ and allow him to pay for their sins on his cross. In the words of John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation to the Mason is something entirely different. Masons are counting on their own good works, something that the Bible says cannot possibly save them. In fact, the Masonic Monitor teaches that God, the all-seeing eye, will reward men according to their works. The all-seeing eye pervades the inmost recesses of the human heart and will reward us according to our merits. In the 19th degree of the Scottish Rite, the Mason is told, Masons who have given proof of their attachment to the statutes and rules of the order, which in the end will make them deserving of entering the celestial Jerusalem or heaven. The 28th degree of the Scottish Rite states, The true Mason raises himself by degrees till he reaches heaven. Masons believe that they can earn their salvation and they, they can climb a ladder up to God. They call the great architect of the universe. And that one day they'll stand before God and God will usher them into heaven, not because of Jesus Christ, but because they were a good Mason and they did all of these good works. In fact, I was speaking to the head potentate of the shrine in Minneapolis, where I'm from. He called me up one day, and he had heard my tape on masonry. He says, how dare you say that masonry is not Christian? He says, I'm a deacon in my church. I teach Sunday school in my church. He says, I'm a good Christian. He says, and I'm the head of the shrine. How can you say I'm not a Christian? And I stopped, and I asked him one question. I said, well, sir... I said, if you were to die and stand before God tonight, and he should ask you, why should I let you into my heaven? I said, what would you say to him? Now, I'll never forget there was a silence for about 10, 15 seconds. And, and then he said to me, he said, well, I guess I would tell him I was a good Mason. If Masons are depending upon the lodge to save them, then their trust is as misplaced as those who depend upon church membership rather than on Christ. One might just as well depend on belonging to the Kiwanis or Rotary Club if good works would save us. I was speaking down in, in Texas, in South Texas, where uh, in a large church, uh, the Masons uh, who were in the church, uh, many of them on the elder board, uh, saw my tape Sunday morning when I was speaking there, and they said, 
you know, why are we allowing this man into our church? Uh, uh, he's criticizing Freemasonry. And most of the elder board were Masons. The Sunday school teachers were Masons. In fact, one of the elders was the worshipful master of the lodge in town. Another one was the supreme potentate of the shrine. And they came to me after the service, and I said, well, you have the books. I said, look up in your own books, in context, what I say. I gave the chapters of the page numbers. They spent till 4 in the morning, Sunday night, going through all the documentation in their own Masonic library. They came back Monday, and they said, we want you to know, Ron, we all resigned from the lodge last night. And we are seeing this happen all across the country as Masons will peel away the outer wrapping of the package and examine the content of what they're in. They will discover that they are in a non-Christian, pagan, idolatrous cult, and no Christian has any part in it. In this video, we've tried to be objective. We have no ax to grind, either with organized Freemasonry or with individual Masons. There's absolutely no doubt that a great deal of good has been done in the name of Freemasonry. And the morals of many, if not most Masons, are of a very high order indeed. But that is unfortunately not the issue here. The real issue is that Masonry is a pagan religion that has more in common with witchcraft than Christianity. This is a time when they say that you're coming from darkness into light. Its God is not the God of the Bible. Its God is Chobulon, a composite of Jehovah, Baal, the Canaanite fertility deity, and On, or Osiris, the Egyptian sun god of phallic worship. Its means of salvation is not the cross of Christ, but a system of morality and good works to endeavor to attain to the celestial lodge. And to the Mason, Jesus Christ is not the sinless son of God, but is degraded to the position of being just a great reformer, no different than Buddha, Confucius, or Muhammad. It is here where we take issue with Freemasonry. The same Jesus who claimed to be God in human flesh also claimed to be the only way to the Father. He also said that a man cannot serve two masters. If you are a Mason, you must make a decision. You cannot be a Christian and remain in the Masonic Lodge. Either let your sins be nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, or try to pay for them yourself in the system of morality and good works. There are verses in the Bible that state that we should come out from among them. That we should, that darkness has no relationship with light. And also in the book of Proverbs, it states that there is a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death. And so therefore, my uh, advice is to walk away from it. 